Okay, hello. Um, well, thank you for all for coming. My name is Eric Karstens, and I'm the program manager at Bowsey Ocean Awareness Programs. We are a Massachusetts-based nonprofit that engages young people in environmental education and advocacy through art making. So I'll give you a little bit of background about my story and how I got here. Um, I have loved the ocean my entire life. Um, I went to the beach a lot growing up, and one time when I was too young to even remember, I found a jellyfish washed up on the beach, and I have been completely obsessed ever since. My parents would take me to the library and I would check out books just so I could look at pictures of jellyfish for hours on end. Um, I also grew up just outside of Washington, D.C. in Virginia, so we went into the museums, the Smithsonian Museums a lot, and I dragged them to the Museum of Natural History every single time. I love that place. Um, so growing up, I knew I wanted to Recording in progress. go into the ocean sciences, marine science in some capacity, and I studied biology and marine science in college, fully expecting that I was going to become a researcher, just because that's what I thought you'd do if you study marine science. Um, and I forced that for a long time, um, and I finally came to terms with the fact that I don't love lab work. Lab work is not my passion. Um, I'd much rather talk to people about the ocean, get people excited about the ocean, and, cons to, and excited to conserve it. Um, so I went back to grad school, um, drawing on my love of museums and going to the Smithsonian, and got my master's in museum education at Tufts, just over the river. Um, and at Tufts, I got introduced. I was one of the only science people in the program. I was with a lot of art people. Um, which was really exciting because that introduced me to the art world. And then I found Bow Seat, which is the perfect opportunity to integrate both the ocean science and the art side. So I'll give you a little bit of a rundown of what this presentation is going to look like. I'll introduce you to Bow Seat and what we do. Um, I'll talk about our flagship program, which is the Ocean Awareness Contest. Um, and then we're going to do a little art observation um, activity using visual thinking strategies. Uh, so Bowseat started in 2011 when our founder, Linda Cabot, took her daughters to Maine to film a documentary on cod, puffin, and lobster conservation. Um, they talked to all sorts of stakeholders, fishermen, scientists, community members, and what she really discovered was that her daughters got really engaged in the process of making this documentary. Uh, not only were they engaged, um, but they built a personal connection to the material, much more than they would have if they were reading from a textbook or listening passively to a lecture. So she thought, you know, I want to harness the power of the creative process. And she created the Ocean Awareness Essay Contest. Um, the first one was in 2012 um, and got some feedback that writing essays is not very fun. Like, students aren't excited to write essays the way her daughters were to create these documentaries. So it expanded to include art, and today we accept visual art, creative writing, poetry, spoken word, film, music, dance, and interactive and multimedia submissions. Uh, basically, anything that you can create, we want to see. Um, so now, I guess 10, 12 years later, um, the Ocean Awareness Contest is totally free to enter for 11 to 18 year olds anywhere in the world. Um, and we offer cash awards up to $1,500. Um, and I will talk a little bit more about those later. Um, the contest is open during the entire school year, basically. So we launch in September, and then students have until this year, June 13th, to submit to the contest. And once again, there are all of the um, categories that we accept. We have a yearly theme for the contest. Um, in the past, we've talked about endangered species, plastic pollution, um, climate solutions. The 2022 contest, which wrapped last June and we are finishing up the judging process for, um, was the funny thing about climate change. So we were challenging students to use humor, satire, irony, or other unconventional methods to talk about climate change. Um, and this year, uh, the theme is Climate Heroes in Action. And this was really inspired by the media. When we think about climate stories that are told, it's a lot of focus on what's wrong, what's the problem. 
Um, and we see that reflected in student art. There's um, a fair amount of doom and gloom, apocalyptic feelings. Uh, a lot of students do express that they um, don't necessarily feel a lot of hope towards the future. Um, and we want to change that because there are a lot of people out there uh, doing a lot to fix these problems. So the challenge is to uh, choose and research an inspirational climate hero, and that can be a scientist, an artist, an educator, um, who is working to solve climate issues and then create a piece of work around them. And then our extra challenge on top of that is to, for them to introduce us uh, to a climate hero that we may not already know. Um, because we do, we do get a lot of work of kind of the big names, and we want to look more community level as well. Um, so we have had students express in the past that the Bowsey community, and they see all these other students who are like-minded, um, gives them a lot of hope and a lot of strength. So we're working on developing a climate heroes resource uh, where students can explore people who are working to make changes whether they're scientists, um, educators, um, environmental justice advocates, um, permaculture farmers, there's really no um, end to who could be a climate hero. Um, and this is a living website. So this is a page that we're building on our website. Um, and it's living, we've added a lot more people to it since I made this slide. Um, hello. Um, and it will continue to live on after the contest has ended. Uh, so the goals of the Ocean Awareness Contest are to spread awareness about the climate crisis uh, for young people who may not have encountered it before and to their families as well. To create new avenues for students to engage with climate advocacy in ways they may not have before. And then, of course, to uplift the youth voices. So we have uh, four key steps that all participants who enter our contest um, go through in order to um, kind of achieve these goals. And the first one is research. We really believe that it's important for students to understand what they're creating about before they start creating. Uh, so we ask students to do research on their local any, on any sort of climate issue that may be interesting and relevant to their lives. To support this, we have um, our resource studio. So we have climate change resources for maybe students who have strong artistic backgrounds but maybe haven't dabbled in climate science at all. Um, we have climate science 101, so kind of the basics. Um, what's causing climate change? What are some of the impacts of climate change? Uh, we have sources that students can use to um, keep up on climate news. Um, and we have resources for dealing with climate anxiety. Uh, we also have some creative resources. So maybe students are coming from the science -y side and don't consider themselves artists in the traditional sense. They don't have a lot of experience with it. So we have creative resources like uh, prompts to get, the, get your thoughts going, get the juices flowing before you start creating. We have some skill building resources, and that can be anything from how to overcome artist block or writer's block, um, or I want to think about animating something, where do I get started with that? Um, and we also have inspiration from um, different artists, adult artists, um, some student alumni artists as well. Um, and then we also have educator resources, so um, information about the contest, thoughts about how you can introduce it to your classroom, um, if you want to integrate art into your programs, this is a great place to do it. Um, and we also have awards for educators, so that can be um, anyone who brings the contest to their students, formal or informal educators is eligible to um, apply for the Educator Innovation Awards, um, which are $750 grants for um, teachers. And there's also opportunities for uh, teachers to connect with us, and we can do either information sessions, um, workshops, uh, virtually or in person. Uh, the next step, and this is the really fun one, this is kind of where the magic happens, is the creation step. Uh, so we ask students to take what they've learned through this research step 
and create something with it. And this is where students find um, kind of new ways to advocate using their unique skills and interests um, in ways that they may not have encountered before. And as you can see, um, all of the art that is on the side of these um, slides are, is student art that has been submitted to the contest in the past. So as you can tell, there's some really, really talented middle and high schoolers out there that create some really amazing things. We also ask students to reflect on the process of creating. Uh, so students kind of take this opportunity to process how did they feel while they were researching? Uh, how did they feel while they were creating? Uh, these issues that they've learned about, how do they impact their lives, and then what can they do about it in their communities. And then the last step is that students will uh, take this knowledge, take this inspiration, take their voices, um, and advocate for the environment. And to support students in this, we do offer cash awards. Um, so these are our kind of top awards here, gold, silver, and bronze, and we receive so many amazing submissions that we added a fourth level to the podium with uh, the Pearl Award. Um, and we also have honorable mention, distinguished honorable mention, and notable awards. Um, these cash awards, we do hope that students will use them to further their artistic practice or further their advocacy journeys, but we don't ask them to report and there's no restrictions on how they use the money. We also have some special awards. Uh, so the We All Rise Prize, we worked with uh, Boston-based artist uh, Jason Talbot to create, um, and that's for students in the U.S. who self-identify as black, indigenous, and or Latine. Um, we've noticed, we've looked at who's submitting to the contest and who's winning the awards to the contest, um, and it is not representative, obviously, of the um, entire population, so this prize was um, created to help invite more people into the contest. Um, anyone who, sell, who is based in the U.S. and self-identifies as black, indigenous, or Latine uh, is automatically considered for the We All Rise Prize. Uh, we also have the Voice of the Sea Award. Uh, we partnered with Taylor Johnson, who is an incredible spoken word poet and uh, advocate. Um, so anyone who submits spoken word poetry to the contest anywhere in the world is automatically considered for the Voice of the Sea Award. And then we also have some awards for students in our home state of Massachusetts. Um, so the Bay State Award is for anyone in Massachusetts. And then the Hometown Award is for students in Boston. And there is an income uh, requirement for that one. Um, so for families under a certain income level are eligible uh, and students opt in to that one. Um, beyond the cash awards, we also like to share student artwork anywhere we can. Um, we do that a lot on our social media, and we're on all of these platforms. You can find us at, um, at From the Bow Seat. Um, we have a student yearbook, which uh, for each contest has all the winners of that year. Um, and then we share student art at conferences and events like this. Um, after this session, I will be going to my car to pick up um, 10 student pieces, some of them from the 2022 contest that we have not um, publicly revealed yet as winners, uh, and we'll be setting them up just around the corner here. So keep an eye out for those. Uh, we also like to do exhibitions of student artwork. Uh, we currently have one ongoing at the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, we have an ongoing partnership with the Huntsman Marine Science Center in New Brunswick, Canada. Um, and then here's just a sample of some of the other organizations that we've exhibited with over the past year or two. Uh, we have some exciting ones coming down the pipeline as well, uh, largely in the New England area, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, we also really try to engage our alumni after they've participated in the contest. Um, one of the things we love is that we're building a community, um, and we want to keep that community alive and flowing. Um, so for the contest, broadly, um, Bowsey is a team of four people, and we are unfortunately not all experts in all of the, um, I guess, categories that we accept student art in. So we have a team of around 60 to 70 judges who help us judge all of the work that comes in. Um, and we've invited many alumni that you can see up here to participate in that judging process um, and help us choose the winners each year. 
We also have uh, a future Blue Youth Council. So this is a group, we're on our second council now, um, of about 14 students from around the world who help us um, develop communications and uh, work together to um, further Bowseat's mission, whether that's writing blogs, whether that's creating content for social media. Um, and they've also created a fellowship program that I will talk about next. Um, so it's a for youth by youth program that the first council created and the second council has been mentoring projects on. Which brings me to the fellowship program. Uh, and this is an opportunity for Bowseat alumni, uh, so students who have participated in any of our programs, any of our past contests, um, are eligible to apply for up to $2,500 in um, grant money to support their creative water-based projects. So we've had students create murals. Uh, we've had students do ongoing beach cleanups. Um, the students in the bottom left um, are uh, based out of Mongolia, and they created a public awareness campaign um, about the sewage system in their city. Um, and then we have students who take trash bags um, and crochet them into mats. Uh, we've also had students develop curriculum that they're circulating to teachers um, around the world. And we have students who are creating um, environmental literacy magazines, literary magazines as well. Uh, so I've mentioned a few times that Bowsey has a huge global community of youth. Uh, over the past 12 years, we've engaged with almost, almost 30,000 students from around the world, um, all 50 US states, um, and 138 different countries and territories. And we've given uh, almost half a million dollars in awards. Uh, we are finalizing the winners of the 2022 contest, and I am certain that we will surpass half a million after we um, give out those awards as well. Uh, we also uh, ask students who participate in the contest to fill out a feedback survey, and this is from our 2022 contest, um, but the numbers are fairly consistent year to year. Um, but 77% of students say that they increase their knowledge about climate change through the process of research. 83% um, personally connect with the subject of climate change. Um, and 65% change their worldview or behavior, which is really exciting. That's something that um, we really like to see and that's something we're really going for. Um, and unfortunately, we receive anywhere from 4,000 to 6,000 submissions each contest year. So we cannot give an award to every student who participates in the contest, but 76% still say that they have increased confidence in their skills after participating in the contest. And then beyond just, as, just the st statistics, uh, we like to hear from the students as well. Uh, we hear from students who find community um, through participating in the contest. Um, the yellow bo blo uh, block over there is a student who comes from a family that does not believe in climate change. They're skeptical of it. They don't engage with that. Um, and this student found solace and found community um, in the bow seat uh, world. Um, we have students who adopt new perspectives, whether that's mother nature or maybe they do research into um, experience different than their own and that helps them um, maybe connect with the issue a little bit more or understand um, and see kind of outside of their immediate bubble how climate change is impacting the world and communities around the world. And then we have teachers that say they're really excited um, that their students are able to create something and write something um, that has a life outside, uh, outside of the classroom and that their work um, can actually mean something and their words mean something to people. Uh, it's very empowering for them. Now, we are going to do an activity called visual thinking strategies. Has anyone ever done this before? Okay, great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a piece of artwork. It's a piece of student art um, and I'm not gonna tell you anything about it, and I'm gonna give you one to two minutes to just observe it, look at it. Um, I promise you uh, it might feel like a long two minutes, but keep looking, and I promise you'll keep finding new things. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna ask what's going on in this picture. One person can raise their hand. Um, I'll call on you and uh, ask you what's going on, uh, and then I'll ask you to justify what 
your observation was with something in the picture. So what do you see that makes you say that? And then we will repeat. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, so I will give you two minutes now to look at this piece of art. Okay, what is going on in this picture? Okay. Okay, so you're noticing that there's this, these two people here who you identified as a family, and they're visiting this um, museum-like space, and you called it, uh, you said it looks dystopian, um, and they're looking at pieces that you identify as um, mostly European, and also notice these helmets here um, that you say help them breathe. Um, and then you notice these two statues here and said that they are animals that might be extinct. Um, so what do you see that makes you say that this is dystopian? Okay, so you, you're noticing that there's this famous piece of work here that in our current world looks one way, but in this one it has smokestacks back here, it has red skies, and to you that indicates that it's dystopian and um, shows a different kind of horror. Great. What else can we find? One thing I will say about VTS uh, is that there are no right or wrong answers. <laughs> so uh, I want us to not focus on finding out um, exactly what the artist was going for, but rather what are you getting out of this? What is your interpretation? Great, so you're connecting this to recent events where activists have been going to museums and throwing soup on the paintings, right? Um, and you, so you made that connection with kind of this frames and the setting that they're in, um, but also said that these two people here um, seem to be more concerned with art um, based on the fact that they're looking at the Mona Lisa and maybe not it's this penguin here, what you're referring to. Um, and saying that this kind of represents maybe in general that we're more focused on the art than we are on climate change. What do you see that makes you say that they are more focused on the art than the environment? Great, so you're seeing that he's taking notes right here, he's looking directly at it, his focus is entirely on this. Um, this is, and this to you indicates that this is something he really cares about while he's ignoring maybe other things that are going on. Great, what else can we find? Okay. 
Maybe one more, one more comment. Yes. So you're noticing that this figure down here um, is looking up at the Mona Lisa much like um, this older figure here, and you're saying that maybe that shows an influence that this older person is having, even if they are at this level here. And you connected it back to a quote from a student um, that I shared earlier that um, their family is like climate deniers and they're not believing it, and you're seeing that maybe that's happening here as well. What do you see that makes you say that he is influencing her? I think it was her proximity. Okay, so they're standing right next to each other here. Yeah, and they're, they're like right next to each other. They're, they look like they're together, um, and they're looking at the same thing, so that might um, indicate that he is influencing her. Great. Does anyone, uh, what else can we find? Does anyone have any other? Okay, well, thank you all for participating in VTS. Um, I personally love this piece. I hope you enjoyed looking at it and talking about it. And I also hope that maybe from hearing some of the other people in the room, their interpretations, they may have opened up your eyes to maybe something you didn't see right away when you were looking at it. Um, that's my favorite thing about VTS. And this was actually the activity I was talking earlier about how I came from the science world and got introduced to the art world in graduate school. VTS was the activity that made me go, oh, actually, like, I can participate in this. I don't need to know, like, the intense art history of something to appreciate it and to understand it. Um, so does anyone have any questions um, about Bowsey, about our programs, about art making? Um, I'm also, I can hang around for a little bit as well. Um, I will also put um, our social media information up here. Um, this is our website, bowseat.org, um, and then my email address is eric at bowseat.org. Um, but thank you all for coming. Um, I really appreciate it.